Hey everyone, it's Miranda here with Essential Flavor Cuisine and welcome to my kitchen. I am so excited because today we're going to be cooking an entire meal. We're going to be making pan seared salmon. We're going to sear the salmon on the stove top and we're going to finish it in the oven. We're also going to be making seasoned herb rice and also some asparagus. So let's get started. I want to first start with our rice. Um, in this recipe, you're going to need one cup of rice. I'm using jasmine rice, one and a half cups of chicken broth or chicken stock, a fourth of a cup of fresh chopped parsley, two shallots, and we also want to chop that as well, three cloves of garlic, two stalks of green onion, we're also going to need one tablespoon of oil and two tablespoons of butter. All right, so let's get started cooking our rice. Okay, so uh, we wanna start with our stove on medium high heat. I have digits on my stove, so I am starting on the number six, um, if you have that same type of stove, but I'm using medium high heat. All right, and so what we first want to start is with our oil and our butter. We want to start that off in a medium sized um, pan. And then we want to add our shallots. Our parsley. And our green onion. We don't want to add our garlic right now because garlic can easily burn. So we wanna go ahead and just start with those three and we want to begin to saute them in this oil and butter mixture. Isn't that pretty? Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so it's starting to smell good already. And we want to let this go for about three minutes. We want to just stir this, get it well coated with the oil and the butter until they get a little bit translucent. And then we'll add our garlic. Okay, now we want to add in our garlic. And we want to let that cook for another minute. Smells so good. This is a very flavorful uh, rice. And I actually love making this rice. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. <laughs> that garlic just wakes up everything and it's so fragrant. And we want to let that go for a minute. What we want to do now is add our rice. And yes, we are adding our rice before the chicken broth is in there. What we want to do is we want to focus on coating each grain of rice with this butter and oil mixture. That's one way where you can prevent um, your rice being sticky. It'll be fluffy. You know how you have some rice that's really, really sticky and mushy? No. Coating that rice with this oil and butter mixture will help prevent the rice from sticking together and um, becoming mushy. Something that you don't want. So this is just going to take a minute. We just want to get that each grain coated. All right, that looks good. And now at this time, what we wanna do is we wanna turn our heat up to high, high, okay? And now we wanna take our chicken broth and we wanna pour it in the pot. And one thing about rice is it will take the flavor of whatever liquid is in the pot. So if you just want, you know, just regular rice, um, and you don't want any type of, you know, a lot of flavor, just use water. But if you want a more flavorful rice, I would 
seriously suggest using some chicken stock, some chicken broth or some chicken stock. <clears throat> so we're just going to put our chicken broth in there and we're going to let this come up to a boil. Once our rice comes up to a boil, we're simply going to take our top, cover it, and we're going to turn the heat all the way down to low, to a simmer. On my stove, it's two, the number two. So I'm going to turn it down to two, and we're going to let that go for 20 minutes. And just like that, our rice is done. So after 20 minutes of being on a low simmer heat, um, the rice is done. So don't uncover it, just remove it from the heat, keep it covered for another five to 10 minutes. Let it settle down, let it rest, and then we can go ahead and fluff. Now, once our rice has finished cooking and set for an additional additional five to ten minutes then we want to take our fork and we just want to begin to fluff that rice just look at that oh yes just gently fluff that rice look at all of those herbs look at that shallot and that parsley and you got the green onion in there and that garlic super seasoned that has cooked down in that chicken broth. Super seasoned, super delicious, super good. I'm gonna give it a quick taste. There it is. Mmm. 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 Mmm, mmm, mmm. That is so good. I'm going in for another bite y'all look look at all those herbs look at all that seasoning look how fluffy it is it's not stuck together and mushy remember how we got that by just coating each one of those grains with the oil and butter mixture mmm mmm yeah That's it, beautifully seasoned. You taste those herbs, you taste that garlic, mm. you taste that shallot and cooked in that nice chicken broth, that's good rice. Okay, now we're gonna start on our salmon. First, we wanna preheat our oven to 350 degrees. I have three salmon fillets right here that have been rinsed and dried. And with our rice, we used fresh herbs. We used fresh parsley, fresh shallots, fresh garlic, fresh green onions. But with the salmon, I want to switch to uh, dried um, herbs. So with our salmon fillets, we're gonna start out seasoning with salt. I'm using Himalayan pink, Himalayan pink salt. That's my favorite salt to use. I always want to say pink Himalayan sea salt, but it's not sea salt. It's comes from the Himalayan mountains in Pakistan. All right, so we want to season our salmon fillets. We want to start with salt. And I'm really not measuring with the seasoning. I'm just evenly coating each um, salmon fillet. Of course, not too much salt just enough to season it. And we're gonna go in with some fresh uh, black pepper. I like to use fresh cracked black pepper. It's more fresher than uh, the already ground black pepper. It begins, to, when it's already grounded, um, it begins to lose its, its freshness after a time. So you really wanna consider using um, fresh ground black pepper. All right, and then we're gonna go in with some garlic powder. I'm gonna season each salmon filet with our garlic powder. Okay, 
And we're gonna go in with our onion powder as well. Okay. And then we want to go in with our Italian seasoning. And when I wanna do something quick with salmon, I just, these are my go-to season, seasoning. Salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and Italian seasoning. You just cannot go wrong with those. All right, now that our salmon fillets have been seasoned, we wanna come over to our pan. We want to use, we're going in with one tablespoon of oil. And in these recipes, I am using grapeseed oil. And we want to go in with two tablespoons of butter. I am I have my heat on medium high again. We're just gonna let our I have my heat on medium high again. We're gonna let our butter and our oil just mix together and melt. Once that's all melted and our pan gets nice and hot, we're going to take our fillets. And we're going, going to lay them in the pan, season side down. Quick, I'm going to my, my hands, wash my hands really quickly. And we're going to uh, cook our salmon for about three minutes. We're going to get a good, nice, browned sear on the uh, on this salmon before we actually put it in the oven. And so on the other side, while we have that down, we're gonna go ahead and season. Same steps, salt, black pepper, garlic powder and be careful not to put the, the, the dry powders in the um, oil because they'll burn. You don't want them to burn. And our onion powder. Italian seasoning. And while our salmon is cooking on the other side, I want to take a um, nonstick pan that I have here to transfer our salmon pieces onto and then finish that in the oven. And we're gonna put our salmon in the oven for 10 minutes. All right, so now we wanna start with our asparagus. Uh, I've already rinsed and completely dried our asparagus. One thing that I do wanna say about asparagus is the end piece of the asparagus is, is, is very hard. It's all almost very inedible. So this piece, I would say about a good inch and a half um, from the bottom of the asparagus, you wanna cut that off because that's really, really hard, really woodsy. And a good indicator of where to cut it is to bend the asparagus. And where it breaks, that is where the woodsy part ends. You don't, Mm, that's very very hard mm -mm. you don't want to you don't want that so you want to take your asparagus about a good inch to an inch and a half away from the bottom that's where you want to cut the asparagus and so for our asparagus we're going to go super simple we're using uh, a tablespoon of oil we're going to use some salt pepper and then we're going to finish it with some butter. That's it. 
And in our pan, we want to add in one tablespoon of oil. We want to get our pan nice and hot. The good thing about asparagus, it does not take long to cook. Five minutes, you're done. All right, so our asparagus goes into our pan. I'm using, again, medium high heat. I have it on number seven. So we're just going to let that saute. in our pan. Okay. Let that go for about a good two minutes before we start to season. We're wanting our asparagus That's exactly what we're looking for, blister. The skin starts to blister. That means it's starting to get done. That's what we're looking for. And it doesn't take long once you put it in the pan. So at this time, I wanna go ahead and season. Like I said, we're keeping it simple. Salt, pepper, that's all the seasoning we're, we're, we're using. We're gonna finish it out with a little butter. So I'm just gonna season it with some salt. Some black pepper and that's it we're going to continue to toss it let each side of this asparagus blister blister that's the word I'm using blister we're going to let that go for about Two more minutes. All right. We don't want our vegetables mushy. We want them cooked, but we also want just a little bit of that crisp snap to them. We don't want to cook the life out of them. So now what we want to do is just take a, a tablespoon of butter, just pop it in there. Just want to go ahead and coat our asparagus spears. And you guys, that's it. That is the asparagus. Didn't take long at all. And guess what? We're done with the entire meal. So all we need to do now is plate and eat. Let's test one. You see, it's still bright and green. Mmm, mmm, mmm. It's cooked, but it still has just a little bit of crisp snap to it. That's what you want. We don't want mushy, lifeless veggies. Look, you guys. Look what we have created. A complete meal that's delicious, that's healthy, and it's pretty simple, right? Yeah, so I am so proud of y'all. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen. I plan on doing more of these. I get inbox messages, Miranda, teach me how to do this, teach me how to do that. Well, here I am. Uh, if you try this recipe, let me know, tag me, let me know what you think. Um, and in the comments, let me know what would you like to learn how to cook? What would you like for me to cook for you uh, that we all can do it together? Just leave it in the comments. Thank you for all of the feedback. I appreciate it. I'm so proud of y'all. So at this time, let us dig in. I want to start with the rice. Mmm. Mmm, that's good. And the salmon. Mmm, mmm, mm, mm, mm. Asparagus. Mmm, yes. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm. Thank y'all for joining me. Enjoy cooking, and I will see you next time.